Struggling to understand the resource networks in Icarus? Not sure how to set up your oxygen, biofuel, water, or electricity? Don't worry, I've got you covered. Managing resources is key to surviving in Icarus. As you progress from the Stone Age all the way to the Electrical Age, you'll need to master different resource systems to thrive. In this guide, we'll break down everything you need to know about oxygen, biofuel, water, and electricity networks, so you can focus on what matters, surviving and thriving on Icarus. Chapter 1, General Overview of Resource Networks. Let's start with a big picture look at the four main resource networks in Icarus, oxygen, biofuel, water, and electricity. These resources are unlocked and become available to you as you progress through the game's advancement tiers. Oxygen is the most fundamental resource as it's required for your survival from the very beginning. Fortunately, Oxygen can be generated and stored in increasingly efficient ways as you unlock higher tiers. You can collect oxygen from oxide nodes scattered around the environment, or use more advanced methods like the oxide dissolver or biofuel dissolver to fill up your oxygen storage containers, such as the oxygen bladder and oxygen tank. Biofuel, on the other hand, is unlocked in tier three. It powers a wide range of machines and devices, from stoves and drills to radars and water pumps. To produce biofuel, you'll need to use a biofuel composter and combine various biological materials like spoiled meat, plants, and tree sap. The efficiency and variety of your biofuel production will improve as you progress through the tiers. The water network is also introduced in tier three, allowing you to collect, purify, and distribute water to various crafting benches and devices. Water is essential for activities like cooking, glass reinforcement, and increasing the speed of certain production processes. You'll have access to different water sources, each with its own unique properties and potential risks of contamination. Finally, the pinnacle of Icarus resource management is the electricity network, which is unlocked in tier four. Electricity powers the most advanced and efficient machines, benches, and devices, but it requires a significant investment of resources and effort to set up. You'll need to harness power from sources like solar panels, water wheels, and biofuel generators, and carefully manage your power grid to ensure a reliable and consistent supply of electricity. Understanding these four resource networks and how they interact with each other is crucial for thriving in Icarus. In the following chapters, we'll dive deeper into each of these systems exploring the specific mechanics, strategies, and optimization techniques you can use to master them. Chapter two, oxygen. Oxygen is the most fundamental resource in Icarus as it's required for your character to survive. Without a steady supply of oxygen, you'll quickly succumb to asphyxiation. So managing your oxygen levels is of the utmost importance. One of the first things to note is that the availability of oxygen can vary depending on your starting location. Hot biomes like the desert and volcanic areas tend to have fewer accessible oxide nodes, which are the primary source of raw oxygen. In contrast, the Prometheus map has no mineable oxide nodes in the volcanic biome, so you'll need to rely on other methods to obtain oxygen. When you first start out, you can simply carry raw oxide in your environment suit to maintain your oxygen levels. Each piece of oxide provides nine units of oxygen and the base suit has a capacity of 300 oxygen. This means you'll need about 34 pieces of oxide to fill your suit completely. However, this is a very basic and inefficient method as your oxygen will be constantly depleted through activities like sprinting, mining, and harvesting. To extend your oxygen capacity, you can use specialized storage items like the oxygen bladder and oxygen tank. The oxygen bladder holds 1,000 units of oxygen, 
while the oxygen tank can store a whopping 5,000 units. The efficiency of converting oxide to oxygen also improves as you progress through the tiers, with the biofuel dissolver in tier three being the most efficient, converting one oxide into 200 units of oxygen. In tier four, you unlock the electrolytic oxygen synthesizer, a game-changing machine that can extract oxygen directly from water through the process of electrolysis. This not only provides a reliable and renewable source of oxygen, but also works in conjunction with the water network to streamline your resource management. Optimizing your oxygen production and storage is crucial for survival, especially when venturing into more challenging biomes or undertaking long duration activities. Understanding the different methods, their efficiencies, and how to integrate them into your overall resource strategy will ensure you never run out of breath in the harsh world of Icarus. Emotional damage. Chapter three, biofuel network. Biofuel is an essential resource that becomes available in tier three of the Icarus advancement system. It's a crucial step up from the more primitive resource management of the earlier tiers, as biofuel powers a wide range of important machines and devices. The biofuel network revolves around the biofuel composter and the biofuel can. To generate biofuel, you'll need to combine various biological materials, such as spoiled meat, spoiled plants, seed oil, wheat, sticks, wood, tree sap, or even guano inside the biofuel composter. This process converts the organic matter into a usable biofuel that can be stored in the biofuel can. The efficiency and viability of your biofuel production will vary depending on the stage of the game you're in. In the early game, levels 10 to 20, the most straightforward and efficient method is to chop down trees, convert them into sticks, and use those sticks along with tree sap to create biofuel. This is a relatively simple and readily available approach. As you progress into the mid-game, levels 20 to 30, your focus will shift from cutting trees to hunting and killing animals. The meat from these animals, along with tree sap, can be used to produce biofuel. Keep in mind that while you can cook the meat in earlier tier devices like campfires, fire pits, and biofuel stoves, you'll need to supply additional fuel like wood, coal, or biofuel to do so. This makes using raw or spoiled meat a more efficient option for biofuel production during this stage of the game. However, once you reach tier four and unlock the electric kitchen stove, you can now cook meat using the renewable electricity from sources like water wheels, wind turbines, and solar panels. This green energy approach is more cost-effective and efficient for biofuel production in the late game. Finally, in the late game, levels 30 to 60, you'll have access to the tier four electrical network, which opens up even more efficient biofuel production methods. You can now cook meat in the tier four stove, use fiber and wheat to create biofuel, or even leverage the unique properties of spoiled plants and guano from the Arctic biome. The biofuel network powers a wide array of devices, from stoves and drills to radars and water pumps. Each of these machines and benches will consume biofuel until the canisters are empty, requiring you to manually swap them out with freshly filled ones. Optimizing your biofuel production and ensuring a steady supply is crucial for keeping your tier three and tier four operations running smoothly. Understanding the different biofuel production methods, their relative efficiencies, and how to integrate them into your overall resource management strategy will be key to thriving in the later stages of Icarus. Chapter four, water network. The water network is unlocked in tier three after you've gained access to the biofuel composter and biofuel can. Water is an essential resource in Icarus used for a variety of purposes, from speeding up crafting processes to reinforcing glass building components and crafting food recipes. When you first start out, drinking water from unknown sources can be a risky endeavor as it can lead to sickness and debuffs. There are a total of seven different types of drinkable water in Icarus, with two of them being exclusive to the Prometheus map. These water types, ranked from worst to best, are sulfur water, found in Prometheus's volcanic biome. Drinking sulfur water has a 25% chance of causing dysentery or stomach flu, and also increases your food and water consumption. Swamp water, 
found in Prometheus's swamp biome. Drinking swamp water has a 25% chance of causing dysentery and increases your food and water consumption. Tainted water, found in lakes and rivers on Olympus, Styx, and Prometheus. Drinking tainted water has a 15% chance of causing dysentery. Rainwater, collected from rain reservoirs. Drinking rainwater has a 5% chance of causing dysentery. Filtered water, purified through charcoal. Filtered water has no debuffs or buffs and is considered a neutral water source. Treated water, purified with charcoal. Treated water provides a minor buff, reducing your water and stamina consumption by 10%. Purified water, purified in an electric water purifier. Purified water provides the best buff, reducing your water and stamina consumption by 15%. To access the higher quality water types, you'll need to invest in water purification technologies, such as the basic water purifier, the water purifier in tier three, or the plumbed sink in tier four. These allow you to convert lower quality water sources into cleaner, safer, and more beneficial water. The water network is not just about drinking water, but also about distributing it to various crafting benches and devices. Supplying water to these systems can increase their production speed and efficiency, making the water network a crucial component of your overall resource management strategy. Mastering the water network, understanding the different water types and their effects, and setting up an effective water distribution system will be key to thriving in the later stages of Icarus. Chapter five. Electricity Network. The electricity network represents the pinnacle of resource management in Icarus, unlocked in tier four. While it requires a significant investment of resources and effort to set up, the electricity network powers the most advanced and efficient machines, benches and devices in the game. The key component in tier four benches and devices is electronics, which require a substantial amount of gold copper, organic resin, and epoxy to craft. This means that getting your electricity network up and running will be a complex and challenging task, but the rewards are well worth it. Tier four benches and devices are able to craft items much faster and more efficiently than their earlier counterparts. This includes the production of powerful armor, attachments, tools, and weapons that are only available in the late game. Additionally, the materials processor, which is exclusive to tier four, is the only way to craft composite paste, a crucial material for many high-end items. To power your electricity network, you have several options, each with their own pros and cons. Biofuel generator, generates 5,000 power and can run continuously until the biofuel is depleted. However, it requires shelter, is heavy, and generates noise. Portable biofuel, generator. Portable, weatherproof, and generates 2,000 power but it also requires biofuel and has a lower output than the standard biofuel generator. Water wheel. Weatherproof generates 2000 power and even produces additional resources like spoiled plants and sponges. However, it can get clogged and requires regular maintenance. Wind turbine. Portable generates 1,750 power and gains more power during storms, but it can take damage from the weather and has a lower output than other options. Solar panels. The most powerful at 6,000 power, but they require direct sunlight and are less effective during storms. Carefully managing your power grid and ensuring a reliable and consistent supply of electricity is crucial for maximizing the efficiency and productivity of your tier four operations. Tools like the flow meter can help you monitor and control your entire electrical network from a single location. Mastering the electricity network and integrating it seamlessly with your other resource systems will be the ultimate challenge in Icarus, but the rewards in terms of production speed, resource extraction, and high-end item crafting make it a vital component of any successful late game strategy. Chapter six, tips and tricks. Oxygen tips. When you first drop onto the surface and have nothing but your suit, you can actually get stone while collecting oxide by hand. This is a huge help in those early moments when you're struggling to find resources. 
Speaking of oxide, here's something crucial about the volcanic biome. You won't find any mineable oxide nodes here. Instead, you'll need to either hunt down those floating drifters or find deep ore veins that require a biofuel or electric drill. If you're exploring the swamp biome, keep an eye out for viscids as they're another great source of oxide. Biofuel tips. Let me blow your mind with some biofuel efficiency tips. You know how you can convert wood directly into tree sap? Well, there's a better way. If you take 200 wood and convert it directly, you'll get 400 tree sap. But if you take that same wood and turn it into sticks first, you'll end up with 500 tree sap. That's 100 extra tree sap just by adding one simple step. The tier two wooden composter is going to be your new best friend. This thing is incredible, increasing spoil rates by 1000%. Pro tip, hold shift to split your stacks as small as possible for maximum spoilage speed. Those strawberries and meat you've been collecting? Throw them in here for quick spoilage. You'll need them for anti-poison tonics, poison arrows, and biofuel later on. Here's a game-changing generator trick. If you want to extend your fuel duration, put a 150-liter portable biofuel tank in the auxiliary slot. Place a 10-liter can in the fuel slot, start the generator, then remove the 10-liter can. Your generator will now run much longer using the bigger tank. Just remember, you'll need to repeat this process if you leave the game. Water tips. Water management is crucial for survival, so let's talk about your options. You can get filtered water in three ways. Basic tier one purifiers, melting ice in a campfire, my personal favorite for early game, or using water treatment pills. For treated water buff, you're looking at either the tier three purifier, the plumbed sink in tier four, or Zigo Puri tablets from the Orbital Workshop. Here's a sneaky tip. Water wheels aren't just for power generation. They're fantastic for farming spoiled plants and sponges which you'll need later for crafting explosives and tonics. Electricity tips, let's wrap up with some power management tips that will seriously improve your base setup. During flash storms, platinum lightning rods are absolute gold. Each strike will fully charge your batteries and protect your base from damage. Tired of messy wiring? Here's how to get those clean, straight lines. Create your first line, right-click to escape, then start a new line for your 90-degree turn. No more ugly, curved wires. Just remember to create separate lines and connect them at 90-degree angles instead of trying to curve a single line. And here's a time-saving tip. You can press R while holding your electrical or pipe tool to inspect networks without needing a flow meter. This works for both electrical and water systems. That's it for today's tips and tricks, survivors. If you found this helpful, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more Icarus content. Drop a comment below if you have any questions or your own tips to share. Until next time, stay safe out there.